In this problem, we have to do a hypothesis test for a proportion. Suppose 234 subjects are treated with a drug that is used to treat pain and 51 of them develop nausea. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that more than 20% of them develop nausea. Okay, the first step is to identify the null and alternate hypotheses. So the last sentence will usually give us a hint on, on that. So the symbol we use is P because it's talking about a percentage, okay? So here it says it right here, claim that more than 20%. So that's going to be our H1. So that's going to be down here, this choice here. P greater than 0 0.20. So the proportion of people with nausea is greater than 0 0.20. So that's our null and alternate hypotheses. Check answer. Good job. It says the test statistic for this hypothesis test is, okay, so now what we do is we go to StatCrunch. So to, I already have it open over here, but if you don't, you click on this and you click on StatCrunch. So I'm going to go to Stat, and then this is a hypothesis test for proportions. So you just go to Proportion Stats. Because we have one sample, we only have one sample of subjects, we pick one sample. And we have a summary of the data. They're not giving us a bunch of numbers, so we pick with summary. Again, it's Stat. Proportion stats, one sample with summary. You left click. Successes, that's going to be the 51. Success is developing nausea in this problem. <laughs> Observations is 234. And then right here, here's our null and alternate hypotheses. So basically, it just has to match what's here in the problem. So we enter 0.20, and we change this to greater than. Good stuff. So you click Compute. Boom, there it is. There's our test statistic, Zstat. It wants two decimal places, so it's going to be 0 0.69. So I'll type it in over here. 0 0.69, enter. Fantastic, all right. Identify the p-value for this hypothesis test. The p-value is, here's our p-value right here, 0.2462. It's really weird. It wants us to round it to three decimal places. So 0.246. Good stuff. Identify the conclusion for this hypothesis test. Okay, because without reading the choices, because the p-value is bigger than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Right? Alpha is 0.05. Whenever the p-value is bigger than this 0.05, we fail to reject. If it's small, you reject. If it's small, you reject. If it's small, you reject. If it's bigger, you fail to reject. So in this case, you fail to reject, so we fail to reject HO. That means there is not enough evidence to support HA or H1. So when you reject HO, there is enough evidence to support that the proportion of people with nausea is greater than 0.20. So if you reject, there's enough evidence to say HA is true. So if you reject HO, you have enough evidence to say HA is true. When you fail to reject HO, you do not have enough evidence. So the choices are fail to reject, and it looks like it's this one. There is not sufficient evidence to warrant support of the claim that more than 20% of users develop nausea. So that should be the final choice. And that's it. I hope that made sense.